Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we're getting into Brian Hill's 2023 Blade series, which I've been enjoying quite a bit so far. So I figured we'd cover it on the channel since it also ties into some of the other stuff that we're covering, like the Philip K. Johnson Hulk series, as well as some Doctor Strange too. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so starting this out, we begin in one of the most dangerous places in any blade form of media, and that's a nightclub. Cause it's here where we're shown a girl who's just off to the side having a drink as she begins to notice a few suspicious activities going on, like glowing red eyes staring at her and some random dude putting a chain lock on the door. So right away, the look on her face is just screaming, I'm in danger, without her saying a word. And for us, it isn't until she spills her drink on the table, where we see through the reflection of what she was drinking, this club is filled with vampires. So for her, like anybody who's in their right mind, she loses it. And she makes a break for the door that she just saw get chained up, by the way. But with how it's done, it's here where we get one of those moments where this is when she realizes that she's trapped. But out of nowhere, a car comes crashing into the club with bright UV headlights hitting some of these vampires and causing the others to combust into glowing embers, with this clearly being the over-the-top entry for Blade. But as he steps out the car, he immediately recognizes this girl, because as it turns out, he's been looking for her for some time. And we'll get back to the reason why in just a little bit. But first, as soon as Blade gets here, he just starts wrecking these vampires. And it's not even a ton of them that he has to fight, because for the most part, aside from the vampires who were killed upon entry, a ton of the other vampires knew that this was Blade, so they just took off running. But after finding this girl, Blade just tells her to get in the car, so of course she has questions. But he tells her that they can talk on the way, so right there, she's like, on the way where? And he just tells her on the way out of here. And after they leave, it's in this conversation where Blade tells her who he is and she's asking him, why is everyone after her? Which is a question that he does not have the answer to. But when she asks Blade, why is he helping her? It's here where we get the backstory of why Blade was even looking for this girl in the first place. Cause as it turns out, just a week ago, Blade got a call from Tanaka, who at the time gave him a very cryptic explanation to this girl's whole situation. Cause back at her place, her boyfriend is pinned to the wall with all sorts of swords and knives after the two of them were attacked by something. So Tanaka shows Blade a picture of the girl. He tells him that her name is Dana Smith and the bottom line is that the werewolf nation needs Blade to protect her from whatever this thing is. And the reason why Blade is even doing this is to make good on the favor he owes this guy, but that's it. So Blade asks, is she a werewolf as well? And Tanaka tells him, no, she's just important, charmed. And he goes on to tell Blade that there's been a shift in the second world which is the world of your vampires, werewolves, and specters. And if Blade were a full blood, he would have felt this shift as well. And as it stands, the elders of each nation, they're not exactly sure about what they're dealing with, but what they do know is that this girl, Dana, she's in the middle of it and she needs to stay alive. And as far as the thing that's hunting her, they don't have a name for it. He's part of cultist, might be immortal, but they're not really sure where this guy's from. So to summarize the mission, Tanaka wants Blade to find Dana first, kill whoever it is that's coming after her and call it a day. But for a moment here, Blade looks at the boyfriend who's pinned to the wall and he tells Tanaka, oh yeah, one more thing, this guy is not dead. So Blade just kills him quick and clean and he more or less tells Tanaka like, okay, let me get this straight. You're looking for an assassin who can turn dead bodies into undead weapons. He's chasing a girl, you don't know why. And if he kills her, the world ends. And Tanaka's like, yeah, that's pretty much it. So Blade's like, fine, he'll find the girl and bring her back to him. But the rest of whatever this is, it's Tanaka's problem from there. But just before Blade leaves, he lets Tanaka know that if he finds out that he's lying, he won't be able to howl fast enough. Because if that's the case, then Blade's going to have to track him down like a post credit scene. But jumping back to the present with Blade and Dana, it's here where the two of them arrive at Tanaka's house. And at this point, he's trying to get her to share some kind of details because he has no idea what he's up against. And he's putting his neck on the line with no clue of what this assassin is capable of. So Dana just tells him she was on her couch with her boyfriend. This thing showed up, it killed her boyfriend, so she ran. But the thing is, at this point, she's told him that already. And he definitely heard her the first time. But what he's trying to ask is what did the man who killed him look like? And it's right there where the assassin just comes crashing in from above, which really is one way of answering that question. 
but right away the assassin he starts speaking in a language that Blade does not recognize. But at the same time with this dude drawing a sword, that part sends a clear message. So Blade tells Dana to get behind him and him and the assassin go toe to toe for a while. And it even gets to the point to where this assassin nearly kills Dana. But before he does, Blade's able to handle it, save Dana and take this guy out. But as soon as Blade kills the assassin, he finds out that something was hiding inside of this girl the whole time. Cause come to find out, this is the primordial demon, Adana. And Blade just killed what was the only person who could destroy it. But more specifically, this sword is the only thing that can destroy the Adana. And the assassin who had came here just to do that, drained his whole life learning how to use this weapon. And now he's gone. So in a single quick motion, Blade just takes her head off, only for her to catch it before it even hits the ground. And it almost seems like he was just calling her bluff real quick, cause she already told him the sword that she's holding is the only thing that can kill her. <laughs> so Blade tried it, he tested it, and it didn't work. So she goes on to tell him, while holding her head in her hand, moments before she puts it back on, that she's come to destroy the first and second worlds to form a new one. And Tanaka served her well, cause he told her all he had to do was point Blade at something he could hate, and from there Blade would just do what he does. But after saying this, the Adana goes on to express how she's intrigued with Blade, and because she likes him, she'll allow him to live long enough to see how all this ends. And you can tell that it's mainly based on the idea that Blade's the Daywalker. He's the half man, half vampire hybrid, who the Adana doesn't want to kill just yet, but instead just really observe and see how he handles certain conditions throughout the course of this. And we immediately see this in play, cause she tells Blade, I'd like to hear you scream. So she sends the broken glass that's laying on the ground flying directly into him, and it gets him to scream, or at least what passes for a scream as far as Blade goes. And right there, the Adana tells him, I like the way you scream, Eric. You'll heal. You always do. Find me if you want. I'd like to hear that scream again. Which right there is just your subtle demonstration that lets us know that the Adana could kill him. But for other reasons, she'd much prefer that he endures and goes after her so that she can observe Blade for what he is until the presumable end. And after she leaves, she takes the sword with her and she uses it to split herself open and peel the skin off of her body as she converts into what is her more common form. And over time, throughout the course of this series, we'll learn more about the Adana and how it is exactly that she plans to destroy the first and second world. But before that, from here we jump forward 13 days where we head down to Cambodia and we're shown Ratha, the younger sister of the assassin we saw Blade kill a couple weeks ago. And it's here we find out that their group, the Swordsman Sect, they've eventually caught up with Blade and they've more or less sentenced him to death for killing one of their own and dooming the world. But right now Ratha is asking for the other members to allow her to carry out Blade's judgment. But these guys are like, nah, we about to take our time as they go on to try and serve him a slow death. But out of nowhere, Ratha just slaughters the other members of her group. And she goes on to tell Blade that they only have minutes before more of these guys show up. And when they do, she won't be able to take them all. So she tells him before she cuts him down, she needs him to promise that he's gonna help her stop the Adana from ending all creation. But as soon as she tells him this, Blade is just quiet for a moment. <laughs> so then she's kind of like, um, okay, will you? Like say something and Blade's like, I'm thinking about it as if he's just got all kind of options in this moment. But eventually he's like, why not? Let's save the world. So she cuts him down and the two of them get out of there. But going forward, Ratha is now a rogue member of the Swordsman sect. And going forward, these guys are going to be looking for them. In addition to Blade trying to stop the Adana. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support, and for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. Alright, later.